warm welcome to NTA Nationwide. I am Elizabeth Bano. Thank you for joining us. Information managers are advocating stiff legislation towards checkmating the increasing rate of hate speeches in the country. Nayang and Nayabagyang reports. The minister who was speaking at a gala night held in his honor commended the Plateau State Government for the energy and resources deployed in ensuring that peace returns to Plateau State, but was, however, quick to note that such unrest are caused by hate speeches, which must be checked. We thank God that we are back today and that just is peaceful. But this peace will be fragile as long as we do not take measures to curb hate speeches, disaffection, fake news, and disinformation. The minister restated his position on the need for corporate bodies to invest in the Nigerian League. I grew up to new four teams, Mighty Jets of Joss, Stores of Lagos, ICC of, of Ibadan, and, and the Nugu Rangers. Where are they today? Because money meant to support them is being invested in other teams abroad. And we must have the courage to say that, no, to know that nobody will develop our own league. But we can't be making money in Nigeria and be investing our, our money to promote other teams. The Plateau State Governor, Simon Lalong, who expressed appreciation for choosing Plateau State for the National Council on Information's extraordinary meeting, said every Nigerian is welcomed to Plateau. So Plateau is for everybody. And as you get into Plateau, you are all welcome. You will always want to come back to Plateau State. <laughs> Plateau is a home, is now home of peace and tourism. Cultural dances featured at the gala night. Anthony Forson, NTA News. The need to permanently resettle the people of Bakasi in Cross River State was again re echoed as a cross section of guests debated on factors that could have led to their displacement from Cameroon amidst other challenges bedeviling the people. They were speaking on Good Morning Nigeria. Lydia Sampson reports. And so remain in the Bakasi Peninsula, Cameroon, following the 12 June 2006 Green Tree Agreement brokered by the United Nations and guaranteed by four world powers, Britain, France, Germany and the United States have alleged continuous discrimination from the Cameroonian Authority. Guests attributed this development to lack of resettlement of the people by the Nigerian government. All we ask is that government should delineate those things and create more words so it can be accommodated in a camp. Currently, the settlement camp is in a camp, but that is totally unacceptable. We don't mind being with a camp, but we don't want to live in the settlement camp. If you live in the settlement camp, then you have made them refugees for life. Green Tree Agreement, if you look at uh, Article 3, uh, Section 2, A to F, state clearly the right of uh, Nigerians living in this uh, area. But my concern is that uh, is the implementation of the agreement. And constitutionally, it is the duty of government to protect the lives and properties of uh, Nigerians. The guests say the Cameroonian government may be violating the terms of the United Nations brokered Green Tree Treaty in the face of ongoing turnout of events. Uh, when there are breaches like this concerning the Nigerians in, in, uh, in Bakasi, Nigerian nationals who are still in Bakasi and being maltreated by Cameroon, uh, the government of Nigeria will issue the appropriate uh, diplomatic note to Cameroon to complain. We are now embarking on a needs assessment of the situation to see where we can uh, come in to intervene uh, most uh, appropriately. They were, however, unanimous that the people of Bakasi local government should, as a matter of urgency, be empowered to pick up the pieces of their lives. This, they say, will enable them to have a sense of belonging as citizens of Nigeria. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. If the problem of delay in administration of justice is to be fully tackled, all levels of courts in Nigeria must join in the reform of the judiciary while remaining innovative in the performance of their duties. This was the message Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, sent to the opening of an induction course for newly appointed magistrates across Nigeria. Judiciary correspondent Femi Okewo reports. 
Magistrate courts are in most instances courts of first instance for most cases in Nigeria. And while they are not courts of records, they also exercise appellate powers over other lower courts, such as area courts. Quite a number of what people choose to call high-profile cases actually start in magistrate courts, and yet, even for the most mundane cases, particularly criminal, that is where litigants always want to run to. This brings about a high workload for magistrates, making this level of court open to the various conditions that can stall the justice system of the country. This is why the Chief Justice of Nigeria, in his message to the induction of newly appointed magistrates across the country, requested for a collective focus, even by magistrates too, to the reform of the justice sector. Achieving these qualities requires a collective and concerted effort at improving the performance of our adjudicatory responsibilities. The orientation course is also meant to introduce the newly appointed magistrate to the pivotal roles of the magistracy in the Nigerian judicial system. It is also heartwarming to note that the Nigerian judiciary is taking giant strides at judicial reforms, and it is therefore your responsibility to align with this current drive. In Abuja, Femi Okewo, NTA News. Meanwhile, capacity building of the judiciary and police in investigation and prosecution of offenders, stakeholders say, is critical in ensuring an effective judicial system that will be fair to all. This was made known at the end of a sensitization workshop on domestication of criminal justice act by states. Mohammed Umar Ajingi reports. Various challenges in the process of delivering justice has made many to lose confidence in the judicial system in Nigeria, challenges of awaiting trial, as well as professional misconduct by members of the bench and the bar, have deepened the mistrust. This explains why stakeholders came together to find a lasting solution. And a way to contribute to improving the system. Deeper understanding of the reforms, revolutionary changes that are brought by this law. The governor of Kaduna State, who is also on the same page with the stakeholders, said the state government has already started discussion with some institutions in USC and the United Kingdom to train judicial officers in the state. These lawyers, of course, will need a lot of training. We all know the quality of graduates these days. Exploring attachments with Crown Prosecution Service in the UK and the Federal Bureau of Investigation in the U.S. to attach some of our lawyers and police officers to these institutions for periods just so that they see the gold standard in investigation as well as prosecution. On the 25th of September 2015, 19 Northern governors constituted the 19 Attorney Generals of the state into committee to review the Criminal Law Act. One of the recommendations is for the state to domesticate the criminal law which Kaduna State is already under process. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi, NTA News. As part of efforts towards creating awareness on the dangers of corruption, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, organized a debate for secondary schools in the Northwest Zone. Tina Toro reports. These are young Nigerians, the custodians of Nigeria's future, in a debate competition proposing or opposing the motion that corruption is an impediment to achieving sustainable development goals. According to ICPC, the debate which drew participants from across the state is in fulfillment of the African Youth Charter, which acknowledges that Africa's youthful population is the continent's greatest resources and through their active participation 
Africans can surmount the difficulties that face them. The intention is to create an awareness at the grassroots to the, our youths, the leaders of tomorrow, so that they will know how uh, they should grow up and make Nigeria a better place. In the competition, Tafa Memorial Commercial College Samarukata came first. GGSS Kofar Gayan, Zaria came second, while GSS Fadankaji clinched the third position. We really do try to practice every morning, afternoon, and evening to see that we can overcome all what our opponents were going to say to us. Bill, I'm feel very happy. The competition is taking place simultaneously in all the geopolitical zones in the country. In Kaduna, Tina Toru, NTA News. Leaders and governors of all the of the All Progressives Congress APC have met with President Muhammad Buhari in London. Governor Rocha Sokoro Chow of Imo State said the president was very cheerful and has not lost any bit of his sense of humor. The governor said the party delegation spent more than an hour with President Buhari over lunch, and it was very clear from the discussions that he follows the developments at home very closely. He said the president was delighted to receive the delegation and asked each governor about affairs of his state. He also thanked the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi. He also asked the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, about the state of the railways. When asked to react, to react on all the negative things being said about him, the president just laughed, describing such negative reports as lies. Governor Okorocha said the president was completely unperturbed by the cocktail of lies. He, however, sent his best wishes to Nigerians. Governor Okorocha told Nigerians not to worry at all, adding that President Buhari will be back soon. As, the, as soon as the doctors give him the green light. Governor Tanko Almakura of Nasarawa State, Nasir El Rufai of Kaduna, Yahya Bello of Kogi, and APC National Chairman Chief John Oyegu were part of the delegation. You're watching NTA Nationwide, Ministry of Trade and Investment on Nigeria's Industrial Revolution Plan. Let's now join Demola in Lagos for this and more. It's over to you, Demola. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to Lagos. As part of efforts to boost the capacity of project officers and industrial development officers that will effectively implement the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan, a seven-day capacity building workshop on business planning and performance monitoring has rounded off in Lagos. The workshop was organized by the United Nations Industrial Development Organization in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. Musa Toliat has the details. The five-year Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan is designed to leverage on the sectors the country has comparative advantage with a view to diversifying the economy and enhance the gross domestic products. The week-long capacity building workshop on business planning and performance monitoring therefore offered participants requisite knowledge and skills in business solutions for effective project facilitation. The training also includes the use of statistical data for economic analysis. We've been exposed to new and fresh ways of business planning, how we can um, address the needs of our investors. We learn how to use research and development to drive different sectors. Senior Statistics Officer, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, Valentin Todorov, said the program is part of the implementation support from the United Nations Agency to help Nigeria achieve quick, tangible results in industrialization drive. We need to provide uh, uh, methodology uh, uh, teaches how to select the best sectors for uh, industrialization of the um, of the country we thought that we need some international partnership that can basically enhance the capacity of the of the people that will midwife the implementation of the plan the capacity building workshop is fourth in the series organized by the federal ministry of industry trade and investment for its project officers and officials in relevant ministries 
departments and agencies of the federal government in Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. The federal government says all efforts towards harnessing the trade and investment opportunities between Nigeria and Republic of Bene will be strengthened owing to the fact that the two countries are blessed with huge resources that can further boost the wealth and economic potentials of both countries. The Nigerian ambassador to Bene Republic, Kayode Oguntuashe, made the remark shortly after his resumption into office. Doing Dia report. Nigeria and the Republic of Benin have come a long way, both being under the West African region. Though a Francophone country, Benin Republic has maintained a good bilateral and trade relation with Nigeria. The Nigerian ambassador to Benin Republic, Kayode Oguntuashe, said the federal government, under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari, is poised to galvanizing the existing relation for economic sustainability of the two countries. We are here to strengthen economic, political, and strategic partnership that is between Nigeria and uh, Bene Republic. Some Nigeria businessmen in the country express optimism that the arrival of the new Nigerian ambassador to Benin will open the window of greater opportunities. Because there are already plans on ground agreements being piled up, waiting for signatures here and there, and I know his presence now will give live to that. I am happy that we have the new ambassador here now. The Republic of Benin, which also has a viable seaport, has continued to work closely with Nigeria in freight forwarding, import and export trade promotions, as well as cross-border business activities in Lagos, Doi, Dia, and the news. Efforts to reduce maternal and perinatal deaths in Nigeria have received a boost with experts brainstorming on how to develop a robust blueprint on ways of effectively reducing this public health burden. Digido reports that the platform for this brainstorming is a scientific conference in Lagos. International collaboration and actions to reduce maternal and perinatal deaths have achieved a 44% global reduction in the past 25 years from about 600,000 in 1990 down to about 300,000 in 2015. In spite of this global achievement, several developing countries, Nigeria inclusive, have not succeeded in reducing this public health burden substantially, prompting specialists in fetal maternal medicine in Nigeria to create platforms for addressing the challenge. One of such platforms is this scientific conference, where experts are examining ways of reducing maternal mortality in Nigeria. Only 36% of women deliver inside the hospital. A majority of the problems happen with those who deliver outside the hospital. So our first stop, our first step is to institutionalize delivery, to make sure that women come in and deliver. And how do we achieve that? We must remove out-of-pocket payments. Former Governor of Ondo State, Olusha Gumimiko, also a medical doctor, was a guest speaker at the conference. He said safe motherhood is a shared responsibility of which government must take the lead. Government cannot run away from its responsibility to provide safe mental health practices in Nigeria. Now, that could be through taxation, that could be through whatever creative financing mechanism, but primarily it is responsibility of government. A robust blueprint for reducing maternal and perinatal deaths in Nigeria is expected to emerge from the conference. In Lagos, the Chido NT News. Well, that does it from Lagos. It's back to you, Elizabeth, for more on Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Demola. The Senate has reiterated its resolve to ensure that health care coverage is made a right for all Nigerians through proper legislation in line with international best practices. Senate President Bukola Saraki stated this at the opening of a two-day summit on legislative network for universal health coverage. National Assembly correspondent Waziri Zayanu reports. Overall objective of the summit is to launch a national legislative network on the universal health coverage to effectively leverage statutory functions of parliament for improved health financing towards universal health care in Nigeria. Senate President Bukola Saraki described the launch of the network as a major step towards guaranteeing health coverage for all. As a major role in the legislators, 
is to promote the welfare of our citizens. It is on us to ensure that effective healthcare system are available to all Nigerians. Minister of Health Isaac Adewale noted that health care should not be made an exclusive responsibility of the federal government and call on all stakeholders to partake in this all-important sector. Health is not an item of expenditure. It is a critical factor for socioeconomic development. In the meantime, the Senate Constitution Review Committee has promised major political and governance reforms in the administration of the federal capital territory through the provision of an indigenous minister in the national cabinet. Chairman of the committee and Deputy Senate President Ike Ikwaremadu stated this while receiving a delegation of FCT natives. I want to assure you that in cooperation with our colleagues in the Senate and the House, we are going to take steps and quickly too to ensure that we put in place the administrative structure that will be able to provide executive functions for Abuja. Senator representing FCT Philip Aduda said they were on a solidarity visit to the Senate over plans to introduce a mayoralty through Section 303 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. From the National Assembly, Waziri Zayan, NTA News. Still talking health, the House Committee on Health has resolved to sponsor bills that will increase funding for the National Hospital Abuja for improved health care service delivery. Chairman, House Committee on Health, Betty Apiafi, stated this during an oversight visit to the National Hospital. Sefia Nyoma Uchi reports. Received on arrival by the Chief Medical Director of National Hospital, Dr. Jaff Momo, says the facilities at the hospital are being overstretched, with majority of his referrals as civil servants under the National Health Insurance Scheme. There are equipment that should never be off power supply because they require, for instance, the radiotherapy equipment has a vacuum system that must be maintained by energy. Dr. Momo decried the increase in power bills by Power Holding Company of Nigeria and the need for PSCN to see them as humanitarian service providers. We are also aware that um, the health institutions have been going through a very difficult time because of the lack of the pay releases of um, the monies meant for outsourced staff in the various teaching hospitals. Chairman House Committee on Health Institutions, Betty Apiafi, says the visit is as a result of a complaint received on the floor of the house on poor service delivery. The number of patients they are, they are handling in the National Hospital is so much because everybody comes here and the funding, and of course, majority of the people that come cannot even pay. So funding has become a major issue with the, with the um, National Hospital. Funding intervention will take place to ensure we complete those projects, particularly the cancer center, which is a center of excellence. It was gathered that the National Hospital pays a monthly electricity bill of 15 million naira, has over 22,000 National Health Insurance Scheme enrollees with 2,000 staff strength and 400 bed capacity. In Abuja, Safia Norma Uchi, NTA News. More individuals and organizations have continued to support the victims of the recent crisis in Mambila Plateau in Taraba State. The latest is donation of building materials worth millions of naira by the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, and 50 million naira donation by Alhaji Alikudangote. Joseph Zanagambo has details. The donation by the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, was informed as a result of the destruction of many houses in the various communities affected by the crisis. Presenting the items, the Permanent Secretary, Sema, Noval Gadang Abu said the donation was deliberate in order to fast track their quick return to their respective homes. Represented by the Secretary of the Agency, Paul Megida Tino expressed the concern of the state government over the incident, describing it as unfortunate. You know, we're meant to understand that, that uh, now the situation is calm and uh, we want to uh, appreciate your effort and the security operative and we pray that this incident will not repeat itself again. There is need for us to coexist together in peace. Similarly, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, had distributed relief materials to the internet displaced persons of the recent crisis on the Mambula Plateau. The items include assorted food and clothing to ameliorate the hardship faced by them, flagging of the distribution at the palace of the chief of Mambula, the director general NEMA, Mustafa Inusa Mehaja, Represented by the director of rescue and search, Air Commodore Sonny Ohemu, sympathized with their situation and re-emphasized the federal government's commitment towards their plight. 
It's very important for this team to, to, be, to, to, to get to the, the, the desired people. And that's why we have told them in absolute terms that we will not condone any leader when we begin to hear complaints from them. Records at Nema's disposal revealed that over 12,000 IDPs are currently living in various camps in Sierra local government area in Jalingo. Joseph Zanagambo, NTA News. And to consolidate on the successes being recorded in the fight against insurgency, the armed forces and other sister agencies are meeting in Abuja to perfect strategies to counter terrorism and other criminal activities. Olaji Debello reports the synergy, information sharing and maintenance of peace, law and order were identified as pivotal. Insurgency, pipeline vandalism, armed banditry, farmers and headsman clashes are security challenges Nigeria has been grappling with in the past few years. Despite successes being recorded in tackling these issues, the security agencies are perfecting strategies to counter them. One of such is this leadership in counter-terrorism and extremism caused by the Nigerian Army Resource Center, which is the think tank of the Nigerian Army. The Director General of the Center, Major General Johnny Hamakim, was quick to emphasize the need for interaction between security agencies due to the dynamic nature of security challenges. It is my sincere hope that leaderships in counter-terrorism and counter-violence extremism cause one, will further expand the opportunities for capacity building for law enforcement agencies, civil society organizations, traditional and religious institutions, and transnational organizations involved in counter-terrorism activities. But the Nigerian Resource Center was established sometime in 2015 to discuss and come up with strategies to confront and uh, solve security and developmental issues that are facing Nigeria. And this forum is one of the styles and mechanisms put in place to you know, achieve the mandate of the Nigerian Resource Center. The course is expected to come up with implementation strategies towards tackling security challenges in the country. In Abuja, Olajide, Bello. NTA News. While two suicide bombers, a male and a female, at about 11.20 p.m. on Sunday detonated their explosive devices at Dalori 1 IDP camp, leading to the death of three IDPs while 17 others were injured. In a statement by Abdul Qadir Ibrahim, information officer of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, says about another bomber was intercepted, leading to the death of the bomber, while others inju injured as a result of the incident have been administered with first aid and moved to hospital in Maiduguri. The police, in the, F the police command of the Federal Capital Territory has arrested and paraded a suspected Boko Haram member, Seth Yakubo Adoke, from Obi local government area of Nasarawa State. Commissioner of Police Musa Kimo, while parading the suspect, charged residents of the Federal Capital Territory and its environs to remain vigilant and report strange and suspicious persons or activities to the police. Patricia Esameluba reports. The suspects, according to the commissioner, were arrested following an intelligence report indicating that the remnants of Boko Haram suspects resides in Gayawa area of Ungogo local government area of the state. He said a joint police special team moved to intercept the remnant of the group when they were about to attack public centers, worship places, and where people gathered to carry out their daily livelihoods. The commissioner explained that the police team then come under attack, but they were repelled in the process. However, five of the suspects were arrested, including Abba Muhammad from Niger Republic, Usman A. Buhari from Borno State, Elias Abdullah from Giza local government area of Kano State, while the women are Aisha Yau and Ladidi Yunusa, both of Kwana Hudu quarters in Kano Metropolis. All the suspects confessed to be active members of uh, the Boko Haram terrorist group that involved in several killings of innocent Nigerians in Kano and other northeastern states.
Police Commissioner Rabi Yusuf stated that three police operatives sustained injuries from the IEDs and gunshots launched on them by the terrorist group, and they are currently receiving treatment in the hospital. Items recovered from the suspects include one AK-47, 49 ammunition, pieces of IEDs, two sets of Air Force uniform, one military boot, and one laptop, among others. In Kano, Sani Basiru, NTA News. Okay, Sani Basiru there, reporting from Kano. Now, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, says the Nigeria police will establish a unit of the force across the 36 states and the federal capital territory to work alongside stakeholders in the creative industry to combat piracy in Nigeria. Anthony Forson reports that the Inspector General stated this while responding to a request made by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, to support it in fighting piracy. Okay, we'll now take a break to bring you some messages. We'll be back with more reports. Stay with us. Change does not just happen. You and I and all of us must appreciate that we all have our part to play if we want to bring change about. We must change our lawless habits, our attitude to public office and public trust. We must change our unruly behavior in schools, hospitals, marketplaces, motor parks, on the roads, in homes and offices. To bring about change, we must change ourselves by being low abiding students. His Royal Highness, the Emir of Fika and Chairman, Yobe State Council of Chiefs, and Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, cordially invites the general public to the 314 million naira appeal fund for the restructuring, remodeling, and expansion of Potiskum Central Mosque. Date Saturday, July 29, 2017. Venue. Emir of Fika's Palace, Potiskum. Time, 10 a.m. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Yobe State, Al Haji Ibrahim Gaydam. Guest of honor, Al Haji Muhammadu Umaru Jibrila Bindo. Barista Muhammadu Abdullahi Abubakar, Al Haji Kashim Shatima, Al Haji Ibrahim Hassan Dankwambo, Architect Darius Dixon Ishaku, Chief Host, Al Haji Muhammadu Abali Ibn Muhammadu Idrisa, Emir of Fika, Royal Father of the Day, His Eminence, Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abubakar, the third. Chief Launcher, Al Haji Aliko Dangote, Chairman of the Occasion, Malam Adamu Chiroma, Mada Kinfika, Guest Speakers, Sheikh Tijani Bala Kalarawikano, Sheikh Muhammad Kabiru Haruna Gombe, Announcer, Chairman, Organizing Committee, Al Haji Baba Baba, Damasani Fika. <laughs> Growing the economy on the wings of synergy between research inventions and manufacturers in Nigeria is the focus of Tuesday Live this week. Tuesday Live, incisive, informative and educating. Many Nigerian children cannot afford to go to school because they live in poverty. Instead of enjoying education and its benefits, they get involved in street trading to help themselves and their families survive. The Rochester Foundation is a humanitarian organization which currently caters for over 15,000 less privileged children in various schools all over Nigeria. The foundation has a goal to take thousands of less privileged children off the streets and provide them with free quality education from secondary school to the university as part of her Vision 2030. Admission forms are free and available online and at all Rochester Foundation colleges at Oweri, Jos, Ibadan. Kano, Enugu, Sokoto, Yola, Bauchi, Zaria, and Oboko. For further details, visit www.rochesfoundation.org. Rochester Foundation, we educate to empower.
The Information Communication Technology and Telecommunications Expo ICTEL 2017 is here again. The theme is the Digital Economy Strategies for Growth in a Connected World. TCS ICTEL will give a 360 degrees overview of the West African ICT and telecoms industry with key highlights on exhibition, product unveil, conferences and seminar presentation, hackathon, pitch theater, kids tech camp, and lots more. This three-day event will be held between Tuesday the 25th and Thursday the 27th of July 2017 at the prestigious Echo Hotel and Suites, Victoria Island, Lagos. For more information on exhibition and sponsorship details, please contact Emmanuel on 0701-035-7475 and Babatola on 0803-395-2835 or log on to www.icetelexpo.com.ng. ICTEL Expo, connecting businesses, creating opportunities. Be there. Hotels Abuja, the ultimate place to be. Thanks for staying with us on NTA Nationwide. The Inspector General, we earlier told you that the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, says the Nigeria police will establish a unit in the force across the 36 states and the federal capital territory to work alongside stakeholders in the creative industry to combat piracy in Nigeria. The Inspector General stated this while responding to a request made by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, to support it in fighting piracy. Anthony Forsen reports. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed had arrived at the force headquarters with the mission of engaging the police high command in soliciting their support in the fight against piracy. But just as the minister made his request, the Inspector General, without hesitation, told the minister that his request has been granted. We are ready, obviously, to give directive to all our commands to focus on this, uh, you know, unit, anti-piracy unit. But I will also want to observe that in establishing these units in the states, we want maximum uh, you know, participation by all the major stakeholders. We cannot get the solution to this in one day. I, 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 we appreciate that. But we must show the political will. Some of our colleagues have given up on Alaba. I believe that we can drive piracy underground where it belongs. This is why we have come to you. And what I'm talking about piracy, IGP, sir, it's not just films. It's not just music. Books are pirated daily, sir. I wrote one. I lost money on it. The inspector general did not only stop at that, but told the minister that officers from the various force departments will be deployed to work hand in hand with the stakeholders in a bid to form a synergy to defeat pirates whom he described as worse than terrorists. Some members of the stakeholders who accompanied the minister on his visit expressed gratitude to the Inspector General of Police. They have always partnered with the Nigerian police in combating piracy in the country. The Inspector General of Police later made presentation to the minister where he announced plans by the Nigerian police to set up a television and radio station to enable it to propagate its activities and reach out to the public effectively. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. You're watching NTA Nationwide. Child welfare in focus as experts rub minds at UNICEF's quarterly review in JOS. Caleb brings us details of this and other reports. It's over to you, Caleb. 
Thank you, Elizabeth. Welcome to JAWS. Commander Operation Safe Heaven, Major General Rogers Nicholas, says the force will not be intimidated by any group of persons in the discharge of its duties. Bilkis Nuhu reported that the commander stated this while parading four suspects engaged in fabrication and sale of firearms. One of the suspects, Banshak Nandong, who was arrested in Jos with a fabricated gun, led men of the OPSH to the gun fabrication factory in Mangu. Owner of the factory and gun fabricator, 19-year-old Eric Labari, a dropout of Government Technical College, Bukuru Butex, said he started the business less than a year ago because he could not pay his school fees. Only three that have fallen out. The first one is here, and the third one is one single barrel and six huge sprayers. This is the first time they have just... Are your parents aware that you're doing this kind of thing? They stopped me, but I couldn't just keep them. Major General Rogers Nicholas said, the Plateau State Government should, as a matter of urgency, look into the school curriculum of Butex with a view of encouraging talented students to channel their skills for positive development. If we have a school that can produce people that can do things like it, it means that school is good. It's for the state government to keep into what the school is doing to see what can benefit from such uh, products. If somebody who is a dropout can, can fabricate something like this, it means that somebody who is a graduate has graduated can perfect better. On the issue of a clash involving soldiers and motorcycle operators in Panyam, which led to the destruction of a checkpoint, the commander warned the public to desist from circulating rumors which might affect the peace process. In Jos, Bilki Sunuhu, NTA News. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, said Nigerian Air Force will continue to expose and explore the potentials of the younger ones in building strong and virile armed forces. He stated this during the passing out parade of junior airmen in Jos. Priscilla Grumnan has the details. It was a spectacular and colorful display by the junior airmen to demonstrate the academic and military training received in the last six years. Uh, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, this is your way of saying thank you. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, represented by Air Vice Marshal Lowell Shitu, congratulated the graduating students for their hard work, dedication, gallantry, and brilliance, and encouraged them to maintain a high level of discipline of the Nigerian Air Force in the wider world. With the kind of training you have acquired, the total amount to waste of human and material resources to send you to the larger society as civilians. He disclosed that the Nigerian Air Force will absorb some of the students who performed exceptionally into the service of the force. Students who excelled in both academics and military drills were rewarded. The event had senior officers, both serving and retired, top government functionaries, traditional rulers, parents, and well-wishers in attendance. Priscilla Grumnan, NTA News. UNICEF Nigeria has reiterated its commitment in promoting the well-being of children and has therefore taxed sectoral partners and state governments not to relent in their primary responsibilities. Chief Field Officer, UNICEF Nigeria, Bauchi Field Office, Dr. Abdullahi Kaikai, said this at the fund's mid-year review meeting for Plateau and Jigawa states. Juma Steven reports that the meeting had in attendance partners from the health, nutrition, water sanitation and hygiene, as well as the child protection sectors. Central in UNICEF's activities is deliberate efforts at reducing high mortality rates in children, as it believes that all children have a right to survive, thrive and fulfill their potential of a better world. It is in the light of this that the chief field officer commended the Jigawa state government for the release of 150 million naira for the procurement of ready-to-use therapeutic food for the treatment of severe acute malnutrition in children. Oh, 
various presentations by sectoral partners reviewed activities in the last six months and re-strategized for the remaining half of the year, taking into cognizance achievements and milestones in Plateau and Jigawa states in key sectoral areas. Uh, the government of Jigawa state had graciously released the sum of 150 million naira. The government have been given some releases in bits to relevant agencies to tackle issues on health and nutrition and other things. That is why if you look at it, things are going on and of course the effect will be felt. The media review meeting was also an avenue for state teams to update the 2017 work plan and draft that of 2018. In Jaws, Jumai Stephen, NTA News. National will continue with uh, Elizabeth in Bauchi, in Abuja, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Caleb. Now, the need for peace, unity, and understanding among the diverse ethnic groups in the country took center stage at a two-day Islamic conference held in Duthi, the Jigao state capital. Habibu Hussein reports. The two-day conference aimed to enlighten the participants on the adherence of peace unity and cordial relationship according to the teachings of Quran and traditions of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him attracted participants from across the country. The Gaster Governor Muhammad Badr Abakar, represented by the Special Advisor of Religious Affairs, Mujtaba Saleh Kalam, commended the organizers for educating the participants on the much needed peace in the country for improving social relationship in the society. To educate the people of Jigawa State about their own religion. That is the Father Al Aini, the real religion. Emir Abdusi Al Haji Nuhu Muhammad Sunus said the conference is timely and commended the organizers for the foresight. We as Muslims at, at this particular time need to understand that Islam represents peace. Chairman of the occasion, Dr. Abakar Sani, said the conference will teach the participants on the belief and methodologies of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'a. Ahl Sunnah is not referring to a particular organization or union, but we are referring to the original uncorrupted teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Highlight of the event was the presentation of awards to the scholars and certificate of attendance. From Dusi, Habib Hussein, NTA News. Governor Obasike of Edo State monitors common entrance examination. Ogochukuka brings us details of this and more from Benin. It's over to you, Ogochukuka. Thank you, Elizabeth. Welcome to Benin. The federal government says efforts to diversify the nation's economy to agriculture towards boosting food production and enhancing gross domestic products of the country cannot be compromised. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Audu Be said this during a town hall meeting with stakeholders in Ekiti State. Kola Adebubui reports. The meeting, which had in attendance different farmer groups and associations from the 16 local governments of the state, was an opportunity to highlight various challenges confronting the modern day practice of agriculture and possible means of improving the system to enhance food security and as well boost the country's economy. The Minister of Agriculture, Chief Ogbe, believes that every Nigerian must be willing to get involved in agriculture to tackle food insecurity and alleviate poverty in the land. The minister who noted that time has come for Nigerians to recognize that agriculture is a true way to rescue the country from economic challenges, added that federal government will provide necessary equipment and machines for land clearing to ameliorate problems being faced by farmers. Identify Ekiti as one of the major rice producing states in the country. The minister promised that three rice processing means will be established in the state by the federal government before the end of the year. In the next two years, by the grace of God, we do 10 dams in this state, complete the current one so farmers can irrigate their farms and grow food all year round. Governor Yodili Fawashi commended the minister for the federal government's efforts at promoting agriculture and reiterated the state government's determination for adequate partnership to improve the sector in Adwekiti. Kola Adibobuyi, NT News. Governor Godwin Obaseki says the condition in which pupils sit for their school living certificate examination must be improved upon in order to produce quality and responsible citizens. 
The governor stated this shortly after he monitored the examination in Benin. Good luck at Nine reports. Governor Baseki, who expressed satisfaction with the level of comportment in most of the centers, said his administration will intensify efforts to make basic education worthwhile. He urged the teachers and parents not to promote examination malpractice as his administration will continue to reward hard work, diligence, and dedication, stressing that these values must be inculcated into the pupils. This government is determined to improve the quality of basic education. We are determined to make sure that we we, we, we provide that our children the education at the basic level that they need that, to see them through life. Officials from the Ministry of Education and Suburb comment. I want to seize the opportunity to thank Mr. Governor for joining us to do monitoring. The support we are getting from uh, the Governor, I have gone for that to stretch in our resolve to ensure that basic education, the exams are credible. They further describe the move by the governor as a reflection of his desire to revamp the education system. In Benin, I am good luck in Aini, NT News. The Conference of Female Parliamentarians, consisting of female lawmakers in the country, is agitating for the abolition of all forms of discrimination against women. The chairperson of the forum, Elizabeth Ativier, while addressing pressmen in Benin City, decried the alleged discrimination against two female appointees of the governor of Kano State. Obehi Otobu Apisai has details. Oh. ...said the forum rejects the move by some clerics and politicians to prevent the screening of a female university dawn, Pinta Yahya, who was duly nominated by the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Danduje, as a local government chairperson. She said, Nigeria is a signatory to several international treaties and conventions which guarantees the freedom of women to aspire and be appointed to any political, social or religious office. The chairperson urged the Ministry of Women Affairs to wade into the issue and prevent further discrimination against women. We wish to state clearly that the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the supreme law of our land, guarantees freedom for all, including women, to aspire and occupy political positions. The lawmaker of the Delta State, Shola Ogbemudaobo, and her Ekiti State counterpart, Titi Layo Akerele, urged women not to be discouraged but participate actively in politics so they can contribute to the development of the country. The forum also used the opportunity to call on state and federal governments to take steps to implement the 35% affirmative action for women. In Benin, Obehio Tuba Prasad, NTN News. The news continues in Abuja as we rejoin Elizabeth. Good afternoon. Thank you, Ogo Chukuka. Time now to take a look at some top stories around the world with Oku at Bayon. Hello then, welcome to this segment of the news. The HIV epidemic is coming under control in Swaziland, the country with the highest HIV prevalence rate in the world. This is coming from the U.S. government. In a statement, the president's emergency plan for AIDS relief, PEPFA, says the data that it has gathered shows that since 2011, new HIV infections have been nearly halved among adults. Meanwhile, scientists meeting in Paris say the outstanding progress in boosting the immune system to treat cancer may help unlock a cure for HIV. The body's normal defenses struggle to clear the body of HIV and cancer. But the rapidly emerging field of immunotherapy has seen some patients with terminal cancer go into complete remission. Police say five people have been injured in an attack by a man armed with a chainsaw in the Swiss town of Schaffhausen. Central parts of the town on the German border have been sealed off as police are searching for the attacker. A suicide bomber rammed his car packed with explosives into a bus carrying government employees in the Afghan capital early hours of Monday 
killing 24 people and wounding 42 others. The neighborhood in which Monday's bomb detonated is home to many Shia Hazaras. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the horrific attack. And that's it from this segment. The news continues. Thank you, Oku. And talking sports now, Minister of Youth and Sports Development Solomon Dalo says the June 13th Sports Federation elections was upheld for the interest of the sector as 